lecture, we talk about computer software. So a computer software is basically a set of instructions telling the computer what to do. And it's also known as computer programs. Comparing to hardware, which you can touch and see, software is intangible. That's why it has the name software. Without software, a computer is useless. Just like a vehicle, without gasoline, you cannot run the vehicle. Again, this is a diagram showing the structure of a computer system. At the bottom, we have hardware. At the top, we have users. And in between users and hardware, we have software. And we have application software, system software, and device drivers. They are the software that we use to drive hardware to do different tasks. So nowadays, software is everywhere. Microsoft Windows, which is an operating system, is a piece of software. Photoshop, which you can use to manipulate photos, is another piece of software. Google Docs right, is also a piece of software. And PowerPoint that we use to create all the slides is another piece of software. So computer software, basically we can classify them into three different types. The system software, programming software, and application software. We will talk about them one by one. So system software includes the operating system which governs all computer resources. And also device drivers which control all devices connected to the system and also utilities which maintain resources in the computer, for example, creating a file or deleting a file. So more details about system software will be provided in the next lecture. So programming software are software used by programmers to create new software. So programmers use it to design and develop set of instructions for special purposes. And basically programmers use human understandable source code or languages which will be translated or compiled into machine codes by a programming software package called Integrated Development Environment, IDE. An example of IDE includes Microsoft Visual Studio, Apple Xcode, and Eclipse. So these are some of the popular programming languages that we use for creating programs. For example, for developing executable programs, we use C, C++, Java, Visual Basic, Python, Perl, or Ruby. For developing dynamic websites or web applications, we may use JavaScript or PHP. So next we talk about application software. Basically application software are closest to the users and it allows you to fulfill the purpose for which you actually buy the computer. For example, social networking, for example, using Facebook, playing games, surfing the internet, working on assignments, listening to music, or organizing your photos. So they all require different software applications on your computer. So one type of application software we call it productivity software. We use it to create documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. So for the popular productivity software, it includes Microsoft Office, which is still the most globally popular. The library office, which is free of charge. And if you're using Mac, then you may use the Apple iWork. So software for document preparation, they are commonly known as word processor. And it provides what we call the what you see is what you get interface to edit and preview a document. It also allows automatic formatting of a document, for example, changing the styles, inserting header, footer, and page numbers, and creating table of contents, etc, etc. And it also allows document tracking for collaboration. It tracks changes and corrections from different users using different colors. And it also tracks the date and time for the corrections. Common example for word processor includes Microsoft Word, Library Office Writer, and also the Google Docs. So another type of productivity software is the spreadsheet software. It simulates a paper accounting worksheet with a grid of cells. It allows automatic calculation of complex aggregation functions, for example, summation, average, max, and mean. It allows data filtering for easy viewing and sorting. And it also allows creation of different forms of charts, for example, pie chart or bar chart. Common examples include Microsoft Excel, 
Library Office Calc, Google Documents, and Google Form. So another type of productivity software is the software for preparing presentations. It allows the creation of slideshow for presentation, usually via an overhead LCD projector. So it allows easy editing of slides with visual aids. For example, bullet points, numbering of items, clip art, images and videos, tables or charts, and animations and transitions. So common examples include Microsoft PowerPoint, Library Office Impress, and Google Documents. So different software suites produce different file formats. So they are usually compatible between different suites or different versions. So the popular Microsoft Office has two incompatible versions in use. So Office 2003 and before, um, we are using one version. And Office 2007 and after, we are using another version. You can see the difference in the two versions from the file extensions. And due to the incompatibility of different file formats, confusion may arise in document exchange when you exchange the documents with um, different users. So the solution is to use what we call the portable document format, the PDF. So PDF was created by a company called Adobe in 1993. It's designed for printing, and the file itself represents the printing view of a document. So it can include text in different languages, various fonts, and images. So normally you cannot make changes to a PDF file, so it's good for document distribution. And it can be produced by most of the productivity software. So the most popular PDF viewing software is Adobe Reader. So apart from the productivity software for creating documents, spreadsheets, and presentations, there are also other productivity software for special purposes. For example, Equation Editor, Database Manager, Desktop Publisher, Project Manager, Diagram and Flowchart Creator, and also Email and Information Manager and they serve different special purposes. So because of the popularity of the internet, the same set of productivity tools are available based on the idea of cloud computing. So they are not as powerful as the desktop version, but at lower costs. They provide better features on collaboration and sharing of work and documents, for example, version control. So there is no confusion on file format compatibility. Examples include Google Drive and Microsoft Office in the cloud. So we also have what we call the internet software to enjoy different features of the internet. They include the web browser to browse the internet, for example, Internet Explorer, the IE, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome. We also have the email clients for receiving emails. Examples include Outlook Express, Mozilla Thunderbird. And we also have software for instant messaging, for example, Skype, Facebook Messenger, and WeChat. So with the abundant availability of multimedia files today, tools are available for organizing and sharing your image files, video files, and audio files. For example, you can use Picasa and Instagram for managing your photos. You can use Windows Media Player for your music and videos and you can use iTunes for your music files. For more advanced multimedia production, that means that you want to create or manipulate your video files, your audio files, and your image files. You can use, for example, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, or GIMP for manipulating your photos. For animation and videos, you can use Adobe Flash, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Movie Maker. For music, you can use Apple GarageBand or Audacity. So software for games, that means that you want to play video games on your computer. You can have game programs, that means that you have to download and install the game programs on your computer before you can actually play the game. You can have emulator programs that allows you to simulate another gaming console and run games on it. You can also have browser games which you can play directly from a website without installing the game on your computer. So online software 
they're often called web applications and they're accessible over the internet through web browsers. My very good example is the Google search engine. If you want to Google something, you just open up your browser, type in www.google.com, go to the website there and then use the service there. The good thing about web applications is that there is no installation required, so you can use it on any machine with internet connection and browser. So data are stored on the server side and most of the calculations they are done on the server side. Since most of the things are done on the server side, the good thing about web applications is that it requires low computing power on the client side. So they are usually available at low or even no cost because they are supported by advertisements. But of course, okay, since you are putting things online, there are always security and privacy concerns. So portable software, there are more and more public computers available in public places, for example, libraries, coffee shops, hotels, computer banks, etc, etc. And software installed on these public computers are usually limited. And sometimes people may want to use their own customized set of software on these public computers. So to resolve the problem, we have something called the portable software that can be stored in a USB thumb drive and can be used without installation. So example of portable software include Google Chrome Portable and Game Portable. So a piece of software may not suit the needs of everyone. Some software allows installation of extensions or plugins or toolbars for easy customization of features. This is extremely popular in web browsers, for example, Google Chrome. So people can develop extensions for minor features that suit their own needs. Examples include ad blocks for Google Chrome. This will block all the ads on the web page. We synthesis for GIMP and Google Toolbar for more advanced searching. So with the increasing popularity of smartphones, I guess all of you are using smartphones nowadays, there's a new type of software known as apps on mobile platforms. So they allow you to do virtually anything on your smart mobile phone, and the price, they are usually lower than the desktop version. And if you are using Android phone, you can download your apps from Google Play, and if you are using iPhone, then you can download your apps from Apple App Store. So once you purchase an app, basically it belongs to your account and it can be synchronized across several mobile platforms, for example, iPhone and iPad. And to streamline the user experience, there are a few options to be set, which may create some privacy and security issues, especially when you're talking about uh, using your mobile phone online, right? When you put something online, then there's always some privacy or security issues. And some of the apps, they may have access to your address book, calendar, notes, and some other information or private information that you store on your mobile phone. So make sure that the apps are safe before you use them. So for HKUST, we have the mobile app called m.hkust. You can easily get it from Google Play or App Store by searching for HKUST. And using this app, you can get lots of important information about UST. For example, you can get the campus map from this app, and you can also get information about the courses that you can take at UST from this app. We may have specific purpose software for special users. For example, we may use simulation software for the science and engineering community. And for financial institutions and banks, they are using financial software. And we may also tailor make software for different shops. For example, a point of sale or a POS software is needed for taking care of the business of a shop. So we also have another type of software which is called the malicious software or malware. So for malware, it's a kind of application software. Um, to the developer of, this, of the malware, yes, it is because they serve different malicious intentions. And usually, malware run without user's consent. And malware usually brings undesirable results. For example, the deletion of important data, the misuse of computer resources, and also the leak of private information. So there are different types of malicious software. The most common ones are the viruses. And I guess most of you have heard about it. 
They would infect some executable software on your computer, and by running the infected executable software, it will spread the viruses to other executable software, which will make your computer either useless or delete some of the important files on your computer. Another type is the Trojan horses. They are usually bundled with desirable software, and they will cause hidden damages at particular security holes, and they are really, really difficult to detect. The last type is the spyware. From the name, you should know that spyware would gather information from computer users for creators' profit. Because there are too many malicious software, so that's why we have the antivirus software, which will prevent, detect, and remove malware. And it requires virus definition updates frequently because new malware comes out every day and the antivirus software render will update the virus definition frequently. And for HKUST member, there is a free antivirus software that you can download at this web page. And if you don't have an antivirus software on your computer, I really recommend that you go to this web page, download the software, install it, and then use it.